This Zenith table features some very specific modifications that will enable the delivery service uh, or doctor to separate the top of the table from the bottom of the table, what we refer to as demating. Purpose being that if the doctor does not have access to an elevator and his clinic is above ground level, or there are very tight, confined staircases, which make it difficult to bring a large medical device such as Zenith Table uh, into its location, the D-Mate modifications will enable an easy, efficient move of the table to its final location. Purpose of this video is to provide very specific instructions that enable the doctor to remove the components of the table from the pallet to convey the two main components, the top of the table, what we see with the pipe, from the bottom of the table, what we see is the base, bring those to their location, and then conduct the remating or re assembly of the table at its final location. Caution! Do not conduct any activities of any kind without following the instructions in this video. If there are any questions, contact Williams Healthcare directly. The top of the table is actually tied to the bottom of the table by means of five nylon packing straps. Each of those straps has a yellow, red, and black label that clearly indicates warning, remove shipping strap before operating table. Each of these straps are going to be cut and at that point the table will become separated into its two components, the top from the bottom. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll cut the five straps. One more. Now the table is on the pallet and the top of the table can be separated from the bottom merely by lifting and can be carried to its final location in the place. So we've removed the top of the table from the bottom of the table and we're looking at a special cart uh, that's been uh, prepared to receive the top of the table and uh, the cart's on four wheels and that'll permit the uh, user or installer of the table to move the top section of the high-low into position. Here's our top section here and we're going to go ahead and position it right now onto this specially prepared cart. Let's you balance the top of the hilo right on a specially prepared conveyance. It's on four wheels and will move easily into its uh, final position. And now we have one activity uh, that's necessary in order to remove the base from the shipping pallet. This activity is going to involve the use of a Allen wrench that's been provided in the toolkit. And that Allen wrench is going to uh, remove the hydraulic cylinder retainer. We'll remove the label and we'll expose underneath two locking collars. And what we're going to do is loosen the set screw in those locking collars
and once the set screws are loose, they don't have to be removed, we're able to slide the shaft out of position. And now we're able to lift the high-low base from the pallet. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. We have two people. We lift the base, move it from the pallet. We notice that the base is on wheels, two in the back, one in the front, and we can very easily convey the high-low base in that fashion. So we've got the bottom of the table, and we've got the top of the table, both on uh, conveyance uh, systems. And now we'll go through the next set of activities to uh, reassemble the table. Using the instruction manual that accompanies the Zenith table, the first thing we'll do before we remate the top section of the table with the bottom section of the table is to install some parts on the bottom section, uh, most notably the sure step foot switch box, the brackets, the bolts that hold the brackets and box onto the table. We'll install the leveling legs, the dipstick, and these parts go on the lower portion of the Zenith table. On the upper portion there are two parts, the crank handles, and the crank handles are installed on the pelvic crank on the top section of the table. We follow the instructions in the user manual and we've installed the crank handle on the pelvic. We've gone ahead and we've installed the leveling legs in the front We've installed the leveling legs in the rear. We have removed the transport wheel from the front and from the rear. We've installed the sure step foot switch box. Our first activity now will be to electrically connect the sure step foot switch box to the, the harness. And we're going to locate the placard that's called foot switch harness and we're going to go ahead and remove that placard from the harness and we're going to connect that harness to the harness that comes out of the short step foot switch and we're going to move the harness out of the way. Next step will be to remove the uh, packing foam that cradles the hydraulic cylinder and this shaft here We'll take the cutter that's accompanied the table and we'll cut two tie wraps, one on the left and one on the right. And we'll go ahead and carefully remove the foam. All right, now we're ready to begin the remake process. What we want to do is we want to line up the top of the table to the bottom of the table with the pivot shaft oriented to the pivot shaft carrier that will go in. Okay. Now the first step will be to take the pivot shaft bushings, two of them, install one on the left side, one on the right side. They just slide in. The next step will be to orient you that the shaft will go into the shaft carrier, but there is a roller on either side of the lower section of the table, one on the left side, one on the right side, and the action to remate the table will be to take that roller and we're going to bring the roller into that opening there. Once it's in that opening, the pivot shaft will be just above the pivot shaft carrier and we'll lower that into place. Special note. Do not remove the cylinder tie wraps until specifically instructed. Here's the action of putting the top of the table to the bottom of the table. We're lifting up two-man job. 
we're bringing it over. We're looking at those rollers, we're bringing them into place, and we're lowering the table then onto the carrier position. So now when we look at the table from the distance, the front and the rear are now properly positioned. Next step will be to go ahead and remove the footrest, sliding it up, taking it out, out of the way. That provides access to some areas that we'll need to get into. And now we'll go ahead and we'll install the two clamshells attaching hardware, which permanently attaches, mechanically attaches the top of the table to the bottom of the table. Okay. We'll be using uh, for that a 9 16 inch wrench and we'll be using a 9 16 inch socket. Spanner wrench on the bottom, socket on the top, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten that up until it's wrench tight. And we're wrench tight right now. Next step will be to remove the wood supports. Uh, there are two of them identified by these two placards. We'll be using a half inch spanner wrench to go ahead and uh, conduct this removal. Take off our tags, expose our nuts, and using the spanner wrench just to loosen, take it right off by hand. And we'll do the same on the bottom. We have two more nuts down there. Loosen with the spanner. And remove those nuts. What comes off? The wood supports and the attaching hardware for this activity are discarded. And we'll go ahead and remove the last nut and washer. Good. For the hydraulic cylinder connection operation, we're going to have three locking collars. We're going to have two springs. We're going to have the uh, special shaft. We're going to be using this... Um, tool here and we're going to be using an allen wrench and we're going to be using a rubber mallet. All of these materials are provided with the table. First thing we're going to do is take the shaft and again we want to make sure that we have three detents on the shaft, two in the middle, one on the right and the one on the right is on the right side of the table. Okay, We're going to be sliding that through the hole in the casting coming through. We're putting on a locking collar. We're putting on a second locking collar coming through the shaft is now going through the bushing of the hydraulic cylinder. We're now going to take a third locking collar using our rubber mallet. We're going to gently tap shaft and we're driving the shaft through the locking collar. We're now installing one spring. Then we're putting on the the guide. The slide switch shaft. Okay. And then rubber mallet through. Second spring. the rubber mallet, we're driving that shaft in, yeah. patience. Now, 
We're going to use this special tool to make sure that the shaft is completely seated inside. And we're going to gently tap until the shaft moves no further. Now the shaft, locking collars, and springs are properly seated. We're now turning the shaft to orient the shaft to the machine detents. Those machine detents are there to pick up the set screw that's contained in each of the locking collars. We'll move those into position. Slowly tightening down and making sure that the set screw is inside the detent. So we can turn that keeps the locking collars from rotating and enables a positive lock of the set screw. Cut. What we want to demonstrate here is the proper orientation of the locking collar onto the locking shaft. We have machined detents, dimples, on that shaft. And our objective is going to be to move that locking collar into place this particular locking collar uh, does not have the set screw in place for two reasons. Number one is we want to show you that the hole of the locking collar will orient over that dimple detent. Number two, uh, in a later activity, this particular locking collar on the right side of the table is going to have a drop of Loctite, blue Loctite applied. and that will lock that in place. Blue Loctite is used in that collar on the right hand side. Now the collars in the center have the uh, set screws installed. We're going to go ahead and take our Allen wrench and we're going to insert it into the set screw and what we want to demonstrate here is to slowly tighten that set screw and when we come to the location of the detent, we're not going to be able to rotate that set screw. And we tighten further and further, we'll be able to lock that set screw in place. I want that hand tight, and that set screw is fully locked in place inside the detent. Okay? When we're finished with this activity, the set screw of all three locking collars will orient in exactly the same plane. Okay, they will not be misaligned one to the other. The two center locking collars are locked in place. Now we're going to deal with the final locking collar on the right side of the table. We're going to take our blue Loctite. We're going to apply one drop of blue Loctite to the set screw. And then we're going to go ahead and insert the set screw into the locking collar and lock that set screw in the same manner as the other two. Next activity will be to remove the cylinder tie wraps. To accomplish that, we'll use the cutter that's been provided, and we will remove the tie wraps. Cutting them in the rear and cutting in the front. And then there is a small plastic brace that's removed and discarded. Caution. The small plastic brace must be removed from the table and discarded. It is not part of the operating parts of the table. The final step will be to take a small decorative cap and install that cap on the right side of the table to close out the hole in the coring casting on the right side.
Next activity will be to hook up the pipe harness. Uh, we have one end of the pipe harness shown here on the left side of the table, and that's going to connect with the corresponding harness that goes into the pipe uh, right there. Okay, so we're going to remove the uh, sign on there. Take that off. And now the table is not plugged in. It's not plugged in. Okay, there is no power to this table and we will tell you when to plug the table in. And under no circumstances is the table ever to be plugged in while the hands are in the operating mechanism. We've fished the harness up to the inside of the table and now we have two Molex connectors, a three pin and a two pin, and they can only go in one way, which is the right way. And we're done with that activity. The next step will be to mechanically connect the pipe harness to the table. In order to accomplish this, we're going to plug the table into the wall, insert the key into the key lock, turning a quarter of a turn clockwise. Power is now set to the table. We're going to raise the table and that's going to provide us with access to the pipe harness connector. We'll show you where that is. It's right here. Before we make that connection, we're going to unplug the table. It's zipped now. Zero energy potential. We never work on the table in the working areas with the table plugged in. You notice that we have a clamp uh, with a bolt, and we have a locking nut which will be discarded after this activity. Using the Allen wrench that's provided, we'll insert the bolt into the pipe, and we're going to go ahead and make that bolt wrench tight. We've done it. And that now secures the pathway for the pipe harness on the table. Should you be a customer with the optional power front, you'll notice that there's a harness on the right side of the table. And we're going to provide you with the instructions necessary to connect this harness. Number one. The table is not plugged in. There is no power to this table. The table is raised in the raised high-low position uh, to permit access to the harness and fishing the harness now inside the base. We're going to go ahead and connect the power front harness into the respective Molex connector. We already have a clamp and bolt attached. We're going to take the locking nut, which is there for shipping purposes, discard that. Using the Allen wrench that's provided, we're going to insert that into the hole on the right side of the table, underside of the pipe, and we're going to tighten that hand tight. And we're now hand tight. That completes the activity uh, for connecting the power front harness and uh, retaining that power front harness uh, to the table. Our final activity is to do an operational check uh, of the table and install the footrest. First step will be to plug the table in the wall. Let's apply some power to it. And we're going to bring the table down. Power front, down. And we're going to bring it up. And that completes the operational check of the power front. Now we're going to bring the high-low down.
Good. And we're going to bring it up. Taking our ankle rest in hand, we'll bring the table down. And coming to the rear of the table with the ankle rest, we'll go ahead and insert the two rods into the holder, latch plate. And that completes the activities necessary to do a remate, electrical connect, mechanical connect, and operational test of the table. This activity is to install the trim ring around the wing of the high-low table. Trim ring is shown here. And we're going to go ahead and 